Hello and welcome to Daily Politics on Crest TV. On this program, we discuss issues around politics, policy and governance. I am Hamza Idris. Not until recently, nothing much has been heard about the existence of the new Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, at least at the national level. However, the defection of the leader of the Konkosia movement, former governor of Kano State, Rabi Musa Konkoso, from the major opposition party, the PDP, into the party, not only brought it to limelight, but also boosted its membership drive across the country. It was against this backdrop that loyalists of the party were optimistic of its chances when Konkoso was able to woo his supposed act political adversary and former governor, Senator Ibrahim Shekaro, into the party's fold. Unfortunately, however, this political romance could not stand the test of time as the two political heavyweights have now gone on their separate ways. On daily politics tonight, we ask, what could have led to this sudden political divorce? How will it change the current calculations within the NNPP? Of whose benefit will the divorce be? To answer these questions and more, we have in the studio the national chairman of NNPP, Professor Rufai Ahmed Al Ghali. You are welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we will talk on all this after a short break. Thank you. We join. Welcome back. This is Daily Politics on Trust TV. And let's now get to the discussion proper. Prof, you are welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> um, just yesterday in Kano, mm. it was really a big event uh, where the uh, presidential flag bearer of the PDP, the national chairman, other members of the opposition People's Democratic Party went and uh, received Malin Ibrahim Shekaro, a former governor a former minister, a serving minister, I mean, a serving senator. What does that mean to the NNPP? Well, I think, uh, first and foremost, I'm happy to be with you, Hamza Idis, today. And uh, we have been meeting for a long time. Yeah. But I think this is the first time we are meeting. <laughs> one on one. <laughs> one on one on this project, <laughs> on this program. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you see, maybe you also did not look at what happened about two days earlier or three days earlier uh, when Senator Rabi Musa Konkoso, the presidential candidate of the New Nigeria People's Party, descended in Maiduguri. Yes. He went into Maiduguri at a time it was having a heavy rain all over the place. Mm -hmm. But because of his charisma, his character, his uh, acceptability as a leader in this country. People defied rain, defied all the obstacles, and went all over the way to receive him in a mammoth crowd unprecedented in the history of Borno politics. Mm. So for us, that's what matters most, that uh, we as a party, we are moving forward, we are advancing forward, and I do believe it because some of the political actors in the country are getting frightened or threatened about the, you know, the growing popularity of NNPP. That's why they have always been trying to push into us. Okay. But uh, you see, 
people take decisions every day mm. about their personal life and their political life. So if anybody who was part of us decide finally to leave, to go to another place, it will not stop the train moving. Mm. The, the NMPP train is moving very fast and moving across the country. If you have a look at what has happened, not only in Maiduguri, but when Senator Rabi Musa Konkoso went to Kaduna, when he went to Bauchi, when he went to Gombe, and uh, when he went to Kwara, in virtually all the states he went, you could see that there is something that is a phenomenon that is emerging. The Nigerians are standing up and rising up and saying that, yes, this is the time we are going to have a leader we can trust. Yeah, yeah. So that's what is important. But you see, Prof, if you look at Kado, mm. it's, it's really significant considering the, um, you know, voting population in Kano. Um, then you, if you look at the strength of um, Malam Shekaro, the strength of um, Konkosu, if these two leaders can come together, it will send a big signal, I mean, to uh, other political parties. But now, within three months, most likely there must have been some underlying factors that led to this. Can you share some of them with us? No, I think uh, we as a party, we have taken a principal position that will not engage in unnecessary controversy over anybody who leaves the party. Because as one leaves, yes. 10,000 others join the party on a daily basis. Mm. Therefore, we do have respect for the, the uh, Senator Ibrahim Shekaro. It is his decision, but I know that everybody who knows color, kind of politics also know that when you talk about Senator Rabi Musa Konkoso, Konkoso is Kano and Kano is Konkoso. Have you made some effort, most likely, to reconcile them as the national chairman? Like I said, I don't want to us to drag this matter beyond this point. Yeah. Uh -huh. Whatever happens has happened. Okay. Like I said. People take decisions every day yeah. about their personal life, about their family, about their politics. So if uh, uh, Shekaro felt that he is better off living in a senatorial seat, yeah. Yeah, because the NNPP offered him that senatorial seat, and uh, I am sure it is good to go on the day of election, he will just cross over, continue with where he is. But he, he feels that he is better to abandon that one and go to a, 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 a region of uncertainty, of <laughs> doubt, and that he feels is comfortable with that arrangement. So be it. But definitely, as you know, that uh, the, what we have been trying to do as much as possible is that we try to give respect to everybody. Mm. We carry everybody. And that's why almost by the time he joined the NMPP, very late in the day, but still, he was given the due respect, and then he should continue with his senatorial uh, position. And then maybe one or two things may not happen the way he liked, mm -hmm. but I think the overall interest of the country would have been more important now, not the personal issue anymore. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, everybody knows the, the NMPP emerged largely because we are concerned about the future of our country. We are, we are worried that the current political parties that are been uh, holding the country by the jugular over the past uh, 22 years, people are not comfortable with what is happening. And mm. that's why we came and offered an alternative. And we believe this is the, uh, the, the, <coughs> the most credible alternative you can have to, for now. So uh, God is in charge. Then what happens to his ticket? It, I, because I believe uh, <coughs> viewers would like to know what you will do maybe the person you will hand over of equal the strength. Good, the good thing is that, uh, you know, there was a new electoral act that has been signed into mm -hmm. law by Mr. President in uh, 2022. You also know that INEC always comes out with his own guidelines for all kind of primaries and uh, congresses. And uh, we hope the Nigerian constitution, of course, we also have our own party constitution. We have our guideline for primaries and others. So we, are go we also have our lawyers. So we are also going to be guided by all these uh, uh, basic documents and our, uh, the counsel from our lawyers. And we'll take a decision what to do on the seat.
But technically speaking, he has left that seat. And I thought if I were a close person to him, very mm. close, I wouldn't advise him to have done that. Why, but, bro? Well, I think it is a... I, I don't think... Uh, the, what is important in this country is that sometimes, you know, there are a few sacrifices you have to make for mm. the overall interest of the country. Yeah. Even if they hurt you. Besides, what is happening is that he has been accommodated by the party, he's been given his due respect, and I have personal respect with, uh, to him, and uh, he has a very good, good relationship with uh, Rabbi Musa Konko. So, so I thought whatever happened, he would have just, you know, moved on. So I focus on the issue concerning our country today. Yes, you made mention of the fact that you are for Nigeria. He too in his claims said he is for Nigeria, he is for his people. Before he joined you, there were many agreements, but only his ticket was given to him and uh, he felt uh, he can sacrifice that ticket for Nigeria. I think this is common denominator of uh, politicians. Uh, wouldn't you have extended more avatars to him in terms of accommodating some of his candidates, going by the fact that he stands to bring in more to the table also? Maybe, uh, Lord Hamza, maybe you, you, there's something you know better than me. <laughs> 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 On this matter, I know that uh, we don't you want, did your best. We, we don't want to join issues. Okay. Uh, NNPP is moving on, is moving forward. He's moving strong, and uh, I have repeatedly said it that uh, those who take NM people for granted will be surprised. At their own peril. You, you are making some penetration in states close to Kano, maybe let's say Jigawa, Kazina. You even jumped to the northeast. You went to Borno. You started saying something on that. Um, what are your chances in Borno, for instance? Well, yeah, the language you use is like you say we started in Kano, moving to Jigawa, and jump into uh, Maiduguri or Borno as if we, Borno is not part of Nigeria. I, you see, this, this uh, NNPP is a national movement, mm -hmm. and uh, it is having spontaneous evolution and uh, advancement. It is not uh, something that is just done, you know, uh, as if there is no plan, no organization. No, everything is done in a very systematic manner. And uh, what is happening is that every state in Nigeria is very important to us. Mm. And uh, so far as you are aware, uh, technically the campaign for 2023 has not started. Yeah. So what has been done is more or less explanatory, uh, explanatory uh, visits a contact visits uh, to reach out to stakeholders, greet them, open offices, and uh, let them know that they have friends, uh, and, uh, people who care for them. And uh, you just don't have to wait until the day for campaign start, then we are now asking for votes. No, in advance, we must go and show concern and uh, re-engage re the various communities in the country. So it's been moving around the country throughout. And like I mentioned, everywhere he goes, Everywhere the train goes, the reception is unprecedented. The, the, the gathering in Borno, it was so big that some people started asking questions whether you jumped the, the, the gun and started campaigning. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you use? What magic wand did you deploy to mobilize the people? Sir, we have already said this, I want to repeat it, that yes. people are tired of APC. They are tired of PDP. They are tired of what they represent. We have also said that we have passed the face, face, or face of now uh, shouting and crying. We are now at the face of looking for solutions to our problems. So therefore, Nigerians now are getting much more aware. Mm. Eh? Yes. But what affects, it's affecting them daily. When you're talking about places like Borno, it's been like an epicenter of security challenge for over 12 years now. Mm -hmm. Other states have joined. Even Yobe was part of it. Now in the North Central, in the Northwest, South is everywhere. There are all these kind of challenges. Therefore, I think what concerns the ordinary citizen today now mm -hmm. is how to 
uh, how to get peace, how to, how to live in peace and security. Mm. So, and anybody who can offer that hand, that uh, hand of hope, they will always take it. Therefore, it is, the, is like I said, it's a spontaneous reaction. Mm. Yeah? That uh, for long, people assume that there are no options in this country. And uh, of course, because you know, some times back, we had almost 90 something political parties. Most of them have been deregistered. Now you have 18. But out of the 18, most people feel that all the, uh, uh, maybe one or two are going to be permanently on this stage and no one will ever emerge mm. to present alternative. And that is where NMPP made a big surprise to everybody. So, but you know, it takes time for people to accept the reality. Yeah. Uh -huh. It takes time. But I can assure you that go to the grassroots, go to the ordinary citizens of the country, talk to them, listen to them. You will hear the cries that they need change, genuine change that will bring back lasting peace in this country. Something happened ahead of your arrival in, in Meduguri, the ceiling of your, your office. What caused that? What was the reason? Well, whatever it is, the, the most modest explanation could be that it is that done by overseas officials. That is the modest explanation. Some people who want to impress government, you know, uh, they want to show they have heard that Concorso is going to come and Concorso is moving like a tsunami. <laughs> so it's not like something they will just wait until the man he, he comes and sweeps the streets and towns or my do before they begin to react. Maybe yes, but uh, a bigger explanation could be that uh, APC as it is, sometimes they benefited from being opposition political party in 2014, 2015. Mm. But now you see that questions and questions, there are resistance to opposition as well. Otherwise, uh, if, for example, uh, your political parties' offices are located in a particular area mm. and you are not comfortable either because of environmental factor or security factor or other a, a, a major reasons. The normal thing is to write, to approach the party that what we have done, uh, you know, is not proper. The way you are sitting here is not correct. Please, we want you to move. They can even, if they want to be nice, they can even offer a different location. Then they give them time to move their uh, offices. And then there's no quarrel. Nobody will even hear about it. But you cannot come using massive security Huh? in a state where this kind of thing is only used for fighting the insurgents that are all over the place. You will now deploy these this very lethal materials, lethal forces, just to go and close an office. It's overkill. <laughs> it's overkill. It was, uh, the, the timing was wrong. The reasons were wrong. The purple, uh, the, 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 everything was not properly thought of. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, uh, maybe if it was intended to discourage uh, our party, from stepping into the city, in fact, that uh, it, it encourages even more. Because that was the question I wanted to ask. Yes. Were you were you discouraged ahead of your arrival when you heard of the ceiling? How can we be discouraged? Because if you start uh, when we are going to face a general campaign nationwide, and then because somebody sees our office, then we feel discouraged. Then we better close shop and go and hand over our certificate to INEC, say that we are not going to do this. There are going to be all kind of small obstacles here and there. But what we are saying that we are calling, really, sincerely, mm -hmm. that uh, all leading political parties in this country, they should play by the book. Because it, it, this, is, this is not the time to raise tension in the country yeah. or to take decisions or adopt policies or particular actions that are going to aggravate tension in the country. That uh, we need a peaceful transition in this country. Mm -hmm. We need a, a peaceful atmosphere so that people can conduct themselves freely. Mm. After all, uh, if, uh, being a part of a political party is voluntary. And if you have uh, political parties that have been there registered by INEC under the Nigerian constitution, they have the right to operate also as equal partners in the, uh, in the political uh, space. Yes. So trying to shut down any political party now will say wrong signals, both to our local people and to the international community that actually we are not ready for a uh, genuine uh, election 2023. Are you really suspecting someone? 
or you feel it's just overzealousness? So. I mentioned that I say whatever the reasons, yes. whatever the reasons, the, the timing is wrong, the purpose is wrong, and the way it done was also wrong. It, was, it, it did not require to mobilize entire police force. These are highly, you know, uh, trained officers who are dedicated to protect the country as a whole, mm -hmm. and then let them now leave all their major assignments only to come and uh, close a, a party office. For what purpose? Doesn't yeah. it say, say much about uh, whoever behind it, whoever is behind it. Yeah? I'm sure by now must have regretted it. Uh, maybe this may be a precursor to many things to happen because uh, our campaigns have not started. Do you intend to really write uh, relevant agencies to draw their attention to this so as to avoid a repeat as you move on? I think you, you should be aware that you should be rest assured that the party does not take anything for granted. Okay. Mm. Not assured. We don't take anything for granted. Okay. Mm. Now, let's move to the issue of forming your, your campaign council. What is really the We are working on it, and when we are done, Nigeria always know. How will it look like, Prof? It will look very, very strong, robust, and a, a, a campaign council that is now determined to be different. Mm? And then to face our country, face our people. And uh, definitely you will be among the first people to hear when it is finally done. Because uh, the issue of forming uh, council, you know, has caused a lot of problems in other political parties, because they will say, okay, if the presidential candidate is from zone A, the vice presidential candidate from zone B, then the chairman of the campaign council must come from so so. The NMPP is conscious of all this, and because also we know what has happened in those political parties before, and we also have known their pitfalls, we'll avoid those pitfalls. We'll do it differently this time. Okay. Yes. And what will be the, 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 the guiding principle, I mean, the, the campaign tool. You, you made mention that Nigerians are, are really tired of um, the two other major political parties, but there are 18 political parties. Uh, what are you thinking of doing differently that will actually justify uh, Nigerians to, to go for you? Well, I think <coughs> this is a good question. The first and foremost, uh, I think uh, let's, let's understand that uh, we have deep trouble in the country. Uh, we have been talking about the security, we have been talking about education, uh, the, uh, the economy. Uh, we have not even discussed it in any detail, but you know it's an issue that when we start here we cannot finish mm. in the next one hour, two hours. Uh, the education sector, the infrastructure, you know, but I think what is cons of greater concern for our country now, for our people now, is that bridges of relationship among Nigerians have been systematically broken down. And uh, whoever is the cause or whatever the cause, that is not the kind of thing you want to have when you are building a solid foundation for a nation as big as Nigeria to be a major actor and factor in the international system. Therefore, what is happening today is that the bond of friendship, bond of relationship among Nigerians have been consciously or unconsciously broken down. Mm. You know, there is unnecessary tension. As of last year, when we were starting this our movement, what you had was like it was fashionable for people to go out all the way to create militias. They want to form republics. They go and even create flags. They form national currencies, quote and unquote. Mm. They go to some of these fringe international institutions and say they are joining United Nations organization as republics coming from Algeria. And you know, anybody who calls for a republic within a republic is calling for war. Yeah. But you may not want to start a war, but do you know how it is going to end? So, that's why, right from the beginning, the, 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 the basic factor that influenced the coming up of the TNM, the national movement, that finally had the merger with the all NNPP, 
under the leadership of Senator Abi Musa Konkoso was that we must, whatever we are going to do, let's forget about whether I want to consider for elections or going to become president, senator, governors. The most important issue is we must save our country. We must rescue this country. And this democracy that we are always been fighting about or fighting for, we must also not allow it to, to go down the drain. Mm. Therefore, NNPP, the primary concern now is to bring back that hope in the minds of Nigerians, those who are losing hope uh, in themselves, losing hope in the system, losing hope in their country, losing hope in everything, you know. Because unless you do that, there's nothing that can work. So the primary issue is that let Nigeria know that we are much better off as Nigerians, working together as Nigerians. Other countries that attempted to go down where people now are pushing us to, today they are living in deep regrets. Most countries, whether small or big, who from nowhere instigate wars. We have seen in Liberia, we have seen in Sierra Leone, even Rwanda that people are celebrating today, if you remember what happened in those years, they are something unprintable, you know? Or what is happening in Somalia, or what is happening even in, 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 the, in the Middle East. So, now, so you find that those people are put, begin, be beating the drums of war. You cannot call them Democrats. These are what you call anti-democratic forces. Mm. You cannot call them nationalists. Yes, they are, but the question we have to ask ourselves, what is the reason why people are taking arms? What are, why are they so angry? So, to, to, uh, we suspect that when people are alienated mm, or feel alienated, mm. Mm, either genuinely or otherwise, chances of them to behave differently is highly possible. So, that's why NNPV, as far as we are concerned, our doctrine is doctrine of inclusiveness. In whatever we do, we make sure that people must be included wholly, not partially, and that they should know that this country belongs to them. It does not belong to any individual or group of individuals. Mm. That every Nigerian has the right to attend to the highest position of authority in this country. Everybody has the right to achieve the best in his own lifetime. Therefore, all, anything that beca will become obstacles to this kind of thing, should, will, the NMPP will not be part of it. Now, I don't want us to go back to what we've been saying in the past, yeah. that uh, some of the political parties that are now assuming dominance eh, in the system, most of them, when they started, they had ideas, so to say, because especially in the first one, uh, if you look at the elders that form it, they were really... The PDP. Yes, yes. They are genuine nationalists. Mm. They are elders who at that time have also served their time in, in life. Mm. They were not looking for power as it were, but they were looking for how to rescue the country at that time again. Remember the events of the 1990s. So, but even themselves, after the few, one election, second election, they became victims of the system. Mm. No? So, now those who now uh, took over from them saying that they didn't know what to do, they didn't know how to do all this kind of thing, when they came now, uh, uh, you know, suddenly there is a growing disappointment mm. that uh, if you say you want to move away from a, a particular position, you have to take us to a higher level so that we can appreciate, yes. you know. And now what we are now is that we are in the state of flux and all of them, what you see is that is a struggle for power and power and power. The, the ordinary citizens have been forgotten, yeah. you know? So that's why, uh, to answer that question, I say the fundamentals must be addressed initially. Okay. Then, well, Prop, um, maybe we'll take a break here, and uh, when we return, we carry on. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Viewers, if you are just joining us, this is Daily Politics on Trust TV. Remember, you can follow us uh, on all our social media platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, and uh, live on YouTube. We'll take a short break. Remain with us.
welcome back. Thank you, sir. Yes, before we went on break, you were discussing um, uh, ideology that um, Nigeria is actually on the edge. Uh, but a story was told of a certain governor. When he became governor, he was campaigning left, right, and center. Only at the end of the day, after he won, he was asked of his manifesto, and he said he, he doesn't have one. What are you doing to your candidates? Because you have selected your candidates for governorship, for national assembly, for state assembly. What what are you doing on the ground to actually prepare your minds for the challenge ahead? Well, let me tell you. First and foremost, every political party uh, worth its salt must have a constitution. The constitution is the one that guides the conduct of its members on a day-to-day basis. It's a legal document. It's a, the constitution that set out all the institutions, the structures, and the functions and role of everybody in the system. And of course, there are other subsidiary uh, uh, documents uh, such as code of conduct. Uh, they are also supposed to be part of the ground norms for the political party. And uh, when the election approach, they also have to. The parties also have to have uh, guidelines for primaries and congresses. But the one you are now talking about, the issue of manifesto. Yes. Yes. Every political party must have a manifesto. It is a statement of principles, of ideals and uh, missions and commitments and even what you may call the social contract with the people. It must tell Nigerians why they should el elect, the, uh, elect uh, candidates under the platform of that party. And what is that so different from you compared to other political parties? But this manifesto is usually is a broad general principles. It set the tone and direction of what the party wishes to achieve for a country, in this case Nigeria. But because the manifesto now also is the same one that can be used by a member House of Assembly, House of Reps, Senator, uh, Governor, and even President, so there must be some sort of, uh, you know, some sort of, uh, uh, I don't know what it is. Some sort of a, a, a unifying, yes. you know, a position that uh, they will be talking and doing everything simultaneously, aware that there should be no contradiction between what they are doing mm -hmm. individual and collectively. Yeah, but and but at the same time, every candidate also also come up with what you call a blueprint. Mm. Now, that one is like a fine-tuning of the manifesto so that if it is a governor or is a president, if it's a president for the whole country, just to look at the whole country as its full mat and to look at some of the issues. And uh, in every part of the country, there are specific problems that affect that uh, country. And you must address those issues or talk about them or plan to do something about them. But there are other issues that are also common to everybody in the country. In the same thing as a governor, if you are a governor, as a candidate, you, there are certain issues that are universal in your state. But there are certain issues that also affect specific communities. In some communities, what they, what they, their complaint will be lack of water. So if you address water for them, you have solved a major problem for them. Some have problem of access, maybe no roads, or there are roads, no bridges. And then, of course, very difficult to transport. Uh, agricultural inputs and agricultural outputs from these communities if you don't have good access roads to the markets. Now, others may be talking about uh, electricity. As, uh, as bad as it is, in some places it's even worse. They don't even see the sign of electricity. In some, it's a question of housing, you know, especially in urban centers, housing for the workers and the rest of them. So every uh, state, every uh, local government, every ward, have peculiar issues. And that at the national level, a presidential candidate also will have a clearer picture of what he wishes to achieve within the period of the first term and second term. And 
I think there are the, these days there is no major disagreement about most of these issues, only the approach. But some will even promise, but they will even forget that they have made the promise, just like you are mentioning now. So uh, issues of uh, today, like I said earlier on, about bringing back a law and order in the country, but bringing back peace and stability, because without peace and stability, there is no talking about, you can't talk about investment. You cannot talk about going to the farm. You're not going to talk about going to the market. You're not going to, even, even religious duties, sometimes people find it difficult to go because they don't know what will follow. So security is very primary, but it's also tied to the economy. The debate is whether it's the egg or the chicken that comes first. The most important thing, they must have come simultaneously because when you make a lot of improvement in the economy, it will also have direct and tangential impact on uh, the security. If you also improve on the security, it will also have direct and tangential impact on the economy. So therefore, these two must go simultaneously. In fact, a lot of people argue that using physical force alone may not solve some of these security challenges. That there, you must address other underlying issues that affect some communities and some group of people so that they should be discouraged from taking arms against the state. So, of course, then you come back to the issue of uh, education, the issue of healthcare sector, the issue of the infrastructure, urban renewal, uh, everything. Uh, there is, and this, I think that we are doing uh, thoroughly. But, you know, we can share this information uh, here unless you want me to give a pre-consultancy to our uh, <laughs> opponents. Some of, <laughs> yeah, some of them are still sleeping. They don't know what is happening. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, what is happening is that it is very important that we address it. After all, we are all Nigerians. Mm. We live in here. Yeah. We are not living outside the country. Yeah. And then most of us have passed through the system. Mm. And most of us also grew up from the rural community. So there is nothing that somebody will tell us now that we just we say we don't know. Yeah. So, but since knowledge is a continuous process, it is also good in developing the manifesto. Most of the time, it's also good to do it bottom up. Because sometimes it's better not to go and say, people, this is a solution to your problems. In the, in the preparation for campaign, it's good to know, have a total background of what is happening in every community. If it's uh, talking about the state, maybe in some states, it's a question of soil erosion. Yes. In some, it's desertification. In some, it's soil spillage. And you are grooming all your candidates along this line. Uh, of course. But for you to achieve this, mm. you have to win election. I know that in the formative days of the alliance you have that culminated in you know getting into the NNPP, uh, you started discussions with Labour Party, probably because you, you think there is the need for that alliance at the top to get to the top. Uh, what happened to that uh, discussion with Labour Party? Well, I think there is something very interesting happening in this country. First, there are, technically, there are 18 political parties on the ballot, which are recognized by ANEC. But I don't know, for whatever reason, people uh, feel more agitated about NMPP having a major uh, an alliance with Labour Party or not having a uh, alliance with them. I don't know why people, but I, my own instinct tell me that people are having a lot of hope in NMPP. Yeah? And therefore, they also think working with a Labour Party could also add value. Some may look at it differently. Some may say they have a lot of hope in Labour Party and the NMPP can add value. Whatever the point, whatever the case, the most important issue here is that every political party wants to expand. Every political party wants to grow. Every political party wants to carry as many people as possible because everybody, every Nigerian is important. Mm. Uh, not just for as a potential voter, but as somebody as a stockholder in the country who has also his rights and the privileges that must be protected. So as a party, we have always welcomed all kinds of relationships with any political party, but based on mutual respect, yeah. mutual accommodation. If you want to do any alliance, then definitely you must be ready to do some compromises. Mm. You have to do some give and take. You also have to, it, be best, it should be based also 
on understanding the fundamentals that me and you as we are going to form any alliance to truly we share common values common core values yes. we are not doing it just for the purpose of grabbing political power <laughs> yes. if it is that then of course any people will not be part of that so yeah, I had reason recently during a press conference to explain this because for a long time we kept quiet but there was this notion and I believe it was a wrong notion okay. that maybe NMPP was to blame for allowing the relationship between us and uh, yes, the this was the perception the, uh, yes. it's a wrong perception so uh, but we felt that we have to break our silence so that we can put everything on record. And it was not intended to generate unnecessary debate and argument and altercation with the Labour Party. We are just saying it as, is, as it is. And uh, I'm also going to use the opportunity to, to repeat it so those who did not hear it yes. from the earlier interviews. And uh, what we said is simple. Is that at a particular point in time, three member committee were formed. What we can call technical committee, mm. NMPP, and a uh, uh, Labour Party. Please go and sit down and uh, come up with something that can bring us together to work together. I think we as a party, we went in good faith. I also believe maybe the Labour Party also went in good faith. But whatever the case may be, the report we got, okay, was something different. Because the idea is that if, for example, there was a, a, a negotiation, then you have to look at the totality of everything concerning the party. When you talk about alliance, what are you talking about? Are you talking about alliance relating to even our houses of assembly members, mm. our senators, our reps, our governors, our presidential candidates? Is it before, during, or after the general elections? Or is it, what is it all about? Now, we thought that if you are going to discuss this, you also have to agree. First, agree that there's a problem in the country. Mm. Agree you want to work together to, uh, salvage, to salvage the country. Agree also in the principles of how to organize yourself to even win election in the first place. Mm. Because unless you win election, there's nothing you can do. Yes. <laughs> no? So, and remember, at the time this discussion started, uh, most, uh, most political parties have not submitted the list of their candidates to INEC. So, if you do any alliance at that time and it was done loosely without any care or thought, then it is going to affect some of us, especially ourselves. Mm. We are just advancing very, very fast. At Giving that your time. position in the eye of law. Yeah. Mm. So, 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 but uh, the report we got uh, in initially one about three things happened, and that is what was a bit discouraging. Mm. And I thought Nigeria should know that uh, we are not blaming Labour Party, we are not blaming Peter Obi. We are saying that whatever happened you know the, the the procedure was not followed and we are a very serious party we believe in procedures one from what we had was that when the negotiations started there was only one item on the agenda one okay you went with it or you met it there well, whatever it gives me <laughs> i will tell you okay said that please let concurso step down as presidential candidate of the uh, nmpp and then uh, work for uh, peter obi that's one item on the agenda and no option option one item wow and uh, people say that do even if you want to do negotiation also you do what you call comparative analysis of your strength your weakness your opportunities mm. your challenges so that you know that if what are you coming with to, to the table what mm. am i bringing to the table mm. so that you'll be a beneficiary i'll be a beneficiary it should be on win-win situation mm. not win-lose situation because after all, whatever negotiations are, that are uh, done, it has to go back to the parties. And the party will also go back to the people. Mm. So, uh, saying that a uh, concourse should stop, uh, step down uh, for Peter B, at that time it was like, it, was, it sounded very funny. But, uh, uh, like, but they were very serious on that matter. Okay. okay. That was the, the funny thing about it. They were very serious. And that... Um, uh, secondly, even as negotiations commence, which is supposed to be done be behind closed doors, mm. can take a week, can take two weeks, can take more, because it is something you have to put only your intellectual, uh, uh, you know, capacity mm. into it. You have to look at the, the with the political history of Nigeria, how alliances are formed, how they survive, how they collapse. 
and then the issues we are facing today in this country yes for me alliance is good but you have to do it in such a way that you can endure mm. whatever the challenges both at national level and local level even as the negotiations started they were everything was posted on social media oh, from the other end yes sir so it means that now the process is not being under the control of the technical team mm. the social media now took over the warriors they call them so maybe it was good maybe it's not good but whatever the reason i'm not moralizing about it i just felt that it was technically tactically wrong mm. uh, tactically incorrect to uh, 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 expose your own working plans yeah to the market mm. long before you have even reached. and you know uh, people who are not interested in their lives will also have opportunity now to go in in between yeah uh -huh. then the third issue was that also that uh, we thought i should also explain and clear the air is that uh, even if there was a stalemate you can have negotiation but you can have you can stalemate over a particular issue if the issues are many mm. then go and rethink and go let me think go and consult let me go and consult that's what is happening between the federal government and us today yes it may look stalemated but still they sit down and i debate mm. and then negotiate yeah so the stalemate stalemating a uh, negotiation doesn't mean breakdown mm. of negotiation it means that still there are areas that are not clearly understood mm. or agreed upon or whatever then go and revert back to your principles no again they formally announce that uh, they themselves without having a joint press conference mm. with an mpp yes <laughs> to announce that the uh, the negotiation, the, uh, the negotiation collapsed. collapsed at on the 17th of june and the party was not involved in this kind of things wow because as far as concerned we believe that if we want to do anything let the technical committee finish his job agree on basic principles mm. then the party now can be involved then other members of the party will be involved before you before the collapse what was your expectation your 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 candidate to be the flag bearer peter obi the, the vice presidential is candidate not the young issue of uh, this is my turn politics okay i'm not talking about this my turn politics you know for example I had the opportunity and privilege to work under PDP to support Gula Jonathan in 2011. Yeah. I, we in the party, we saw him as a Nigerian, as a leader, as a, a who is has legitimate right to stand for elections. And we campaigned for him nationwide. Hmm? And we didn't look at him as if, uh, uh, why not, why should I support him? Support him? Let me go and support somebody. He was uh, at that time a uh, uh, contest against uh, uh, General Buhari. Yes. And General Buhari was not a PDP member. And he didn't know me. And he didn't look for me. So I can go and uh, do volunteer service. <laughs> so what I'm saying that as party men, it means that out of loyalty to the party and respect for the party. Mm. And we have to. And in 2014, when he invited me to be his political advisor, okay, I took up the challenge. And then again, I did it between, uh, with all my effort, with all my energy, because I was thinking of Nigeria. Mm. Mm? I was thinking about future Nigeria. Okay? So whatever happens, we, the election was lost in 2015, and we kept quiet. So if I could do that, it means that we are not, when you are talking about politics in this country, you are not talking about, you know, supporting somebody from your village or supporting somebody from your religious group. We have passed that phase. Mm. Uh, we are past that phase we are now at a level where we are talking about leadership in a country that can be trusted and that anybody who would want to be part of this journey he is welcome but uh, and uh, we believe that uh, between now and uh, the general elections a lot can happen a lot can happen but whatever happens our eyes are open mm. eh? we clearly know what we want to achieve we are not going blindfolded and we are not going to be carried away by sentiments. Yes. Uh -huh. This this is my tal politics. It's injury to the system. That's why sometimes the best is not coming out from the system. Mm. Uh -huh. So, but what we have, we have uh, an offer, and everybody knows the credibility of the our presidential candidate, Central Rabbi Musa Konkoso. Mm. You can say whatever you want to say about him, but you cannot say that he's incompetent. You cannot say he's corrupt. You cannot say he does not have direction. You don't know that he doesn't have the the capacity, and he's running mate. Hmm? When we came to choose a running mate, we look for, again. We do not want to sentimentalize and go and narrow our focus, mm. eh? Because of whatever consideration, we said no. 
every constituency in Nigeria must be carried along during these uh, elections. Nobody should feel to change for whatever reason. And that's why we went for <coughs> a man of God, <coughs> a, a Bishop Isaac Idahosa. Yes. He is an educationist also. Huh? And if I say, I mean, right, I've said he's a man of God. Mm -hmm. uh, eh? So, of course, me and you, we are also men of God. But yes, he yeah. is now a church leader. <coughs> yes, but Prof, uh, excellence. What, what some Nigerians are saying is, of course, uh, Senator Konkoso, his pedigree, excellent. You know, acceptability, capacity, and all that. The same Nigerians are saying Peter Obi also has these credentials. But their credentials individually are not enough to give each or any of them Nigeria. They must have to come together. Now, with, with the collapse of these talks, have you made any effort or have they made any effort to reach out to you? Because uh, 2023 is still some months away from now so that you can see whether you can continue with the discussion. What is important is that, as far as NMPP is concerned, whatever that can bring achievement, okay, uh, to the national movement, so that we can rescue our country and save democracy, we have been saying that we are open to everybody, not only able other political parties they are there on the ground we also have people who have not made up their minds about even which political party to support there are other who are in some of the other uh, political parties who will tell us please wait for us we are coming to join you give us time we have reason uh, there's something we're waiting for but we don't want to, want to mention in public there are people who have to protect their integrity okay mm -hmm. so by the time the journey goes far the picture will become clear what is important, I don't know how you arrive at the conclusion that uh, A, A cannot do, B cannot do, or B, B and A. Well, it's not really mine. <laughs> no, but it's what I'm saying is that yes. the, the leadership in this country is collective responsibility. It's collective. Hmm. Yes. That's why we are also saying that those who are beating the drums of ethnic politics and religious politics will not go far because there is no single tribe in this country that can win presidency in this country without the collaboration and support of other uh, ethnic groups or any religious interest. You cannot go and do it. Even if you do it, you cannot run the government. Mm. So the most important is that Nigeria is a complex, advanced country, sophisticated by any standard compared to any other country in the world. But we, we don't take ourselves serious. Uh -huh. We take things for granted. That's why most of the things that we are supposed to, a uh, level that we are supposed to have crossed, we are still dancing around. Mm. Basic things. No. If you want to be Democrats, we must behave as Democrats. If you want a, a, a country like Nigeria, we must stand and fight for our country. Today, many people are not happy to be called themselves Nigerians. Mm. And you may not know it, at least you step out of this country, you want to go out and uh, they say, uh, visit another country. Yeah. They would ask you, what do you have is your passport? You will be shivering to bring out your passport because you don't know what question they are going to ask you. Yes. So it means you cannot carry your head high. Yes. So what is happening here is that this country, we deserve more, we deserve better, and it can be done. It's possible. A new Nigeria is possible. That's why even from our party, the two things that I made up the party name are all critical. One, a new Nigeria. Yes that we say a new Nigeria is possible. And a people's party, mm. party owned by the people themselves, is not just patronizing the people. Yes, it's owned by them, it's also possible. Yes, every political party will have its own challenges. Because there's nothing that is perfect except God. Mm. But we know that the way we are planning our journey, the way we are trying to carry everybody, the way we are going to be open in our minds, we are very clear that we are on course. Yes, the, the last one, which I want you to answer in, in a word or two. Uh, will you accept offer from the ruling APC to form an alliance and your candidate to support the APC? Well, I, I, I don't want us to go into <laughs> hypothetical discussion because yeah. you don't talk about something that is not there. Yes. 
but uh, again, this question I have tried to answer in the last time I had a press conference. That uh, why are they bothering an MPP? There are other political parties. Let them go and poach them now. Let them pick them. Why should they bother us? Good. We know we <laughs> we are focused. We are organized. We know our way. And you are hopeful we, of winning. We are not only hopeful because we are confident Nigerians are now realizing the mistakes of the past. Thank you very much. So Paul. therefore, in that case, any person now that you have to beg him, that you have to persuade him mm. to look any other way apart from the journey that we are taking, that person is also, you have to look at him twice. Thank you very much. Thank well, you very much. viewers, the, the, the discussion <laughs> is getting interesting, but uh, time not on our side. And uh, this is where we come to the end of the program today. Hoping that you will join us tomorrow. Prof, we thank you for patronizing. Thank you us. very much. Uh, thank you. Idris. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hope to see you again. I think you better move now to broadcast media. Thank you. <laughs> Viewers, thank you very much. See you tomorrow. I'm Hamza Idris.